Well, you won't believe this. My earlier trip got canceled today, so I was looking for a boat to go out on a beautiful day. And I ended up on the Broad Minded with Captain Nick Stancic. And we're going sword fishing. That was your favorite hat, too. The anglers, the charter people of the boat, have been kind enough to let me come along and document this. Here with first angler Andrea and Mike. Where are you guys from? We're from Minnesota. Are you diehard swordfish fans? I don't know, I haven't caught one yet. Okay, well, uh, like I said, thank you a lot for letting me come on. It looks like a good day. We've got a uh, good temperature right now, about 72. It's coming up, we ought to see the 80s. We're heading out to no man's land. See you when we get there. offshore we are in 1500 feet of water out on the continental shelf in the middle of the Gulf Stream. Nick's getting the electric rods get ready to drop. We're plugging things in. I'm here with angler Mike. Mike this is not your first rodeo. This is not your trip. You've been to Bud and Mary before. What are you looking for today? Just seeing if we can catch a fish. Okay. I think we can do that. We got enough stuff to do it on this 42 footer. 42 foot Freeman. We've got four 300 horsepower Yamahas on it. We had a pretty stiff ride out. How did you enjoy yourself on the ride out, Andrea? I did, it was great. Okay, now you guys come down to Bud and Mary's before and um, you're from Minnesota. What's it like up in Minnesota right now? It's very cold. Okay, so you're an avid fisherman and you're excited to be here on Nick Stanzik's boat today. I am. Okay, stick around while these guys get rigged up and I'll show you some of their secrets and tricks. Oops, he heard me say that. I'm like, I got now I gotta get another ride home. These are these specially rigged swordfish baits. You see they're laced together. I'm not gonna mess with these baits. These guys are busy, I gotta be careful about bothering them. I'm here with Captain Mike. Now Mike runs the boat when Nick's not on it, so he's gonna he's gonna be a mate today, our mate, while uh, Nick has come out of hiatus, we'll talk about that later. Here is another one of these baits. Can you tell me about this bait you're, you've got rigged here, Mike? We got a good little bonita strip here. And um, got her all sewed up. You told up. me that's 300 pound liter? Oh yeah. Okay. We've got a variation of stuff. I'll try to pick through it as we go on through our day. It's a little bit sporty out here. Uh, we got some good swells going on, but the temperature is very comfortable. And the wind's coming out of the east, southeast there a little bit. And uh, we're going sword fishing. Now, Mike, you're clipping a lead off there. Oh, yeah. To help her, just surely to help her drop down, stay in place. It's on a clip, and as he reels it up, he can remove the lead and reuse it. Might get a 20 pounder, might get a 400 pounder. Might not get nothing, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> now, how does it feel to be back out of here after uh, taking a little time off, Captain Nick? It feels good. If we catch a fish, it'll feel even better. Okay. You're looking good. All right, get the hair. Well, I was gonna let you say that. Well, I had to keep up with you. You got the, <laughs> you got the flow going. <laughs> I don't know. Mike was telling me about this buoy. There it goes, it's like Jaws. Want another 
stay on. Tell me if I got this right, Mike. The buoy's gonna naturally bob a little bit, and it kind of a buoy in reverse. The indication that a fish is on it is when he takes the Just like how it is right now, you gotta get the video on it. See? When it lays over on its side. When it lays over on its side, then the fish is taking the weight off of it and it's floating back. Let's test your theory. Yeah. Nick, the, the rod tip's already bobbing a little bit. What's going to be the strong indicator? Is it just going to slam? No, swordfish is you know, out here drifting in the middle of the ocean. We've got a 10 pound lead on there as the rod's moving up and down. We're just looking for a bite. It's a break in the rhythm of that rod tip, so it'll just bounce usually maybe half an inch or an inch. That's the hitting the bait most of the time. Then you gotta get them on there, that's the tricky part, you know, hooking them with 2,000 feet of line out. But uh, we're gonna sit here and keep drifting, watching that rod tip, and we see a bite, try to entice them to eat it. And once in a while it does bend over and they're just on there. But a lot of times those are foul hooked, and if you get some of them, you lose a lot of those. But let's see if we get a shot today. All right, let's do some rod watching. There's a variation of baits. These are plantation key sword baits. Let me see that hook. It's a 10 OVMC. Okay. We don't really like it much anymore. But... And you're gonna tie a 300 pound leader to it. Yes, sir. I believe you call that an arm's length leader? Yep, one arm length. Yeah, before we came out here, Mike, do you mind if I handle your bait, Mike? Uh, Mike laced this guy up. Little dental floss. Little dental floss. He's giving up the secrets here, people. This is a dolphin belly? No, that's a bonita belly. Bonita belly. Yeah. I'm gonna lay that down there. And we're gonna crimp her. That's what the crimper's for. Oh, yeah. You can tell you're fishing when you got a pair of crimpers like this on the boat. <laughs> We're hooked up on a swordfish. You can kind of see me, it's kind of thumping and throbbing down there. If the tip so towards you is fast. Yeah, so if the tip goes light and that fish starts swimming the weight up, you know, when the tip goes light, you want to speed up and go a little bit faster. But right now, he's just kind of digging, laying there. Just kind of level line, you know, guide the line back and forth. And just, uh, if the tip gets really light, you speed it up for us. Otherwise, you're just fine, okay? So, it's good. We're in 1,550 feet of water, drifting. We've just hooked up a swordfish. It's going to take a minute to get it up. Mike's on it. He's an avid fisherman, so we're in good shape. Still got our buoy line out. Now he's not reeling them up too fast. He's not trying to horse them up too fast. We're trying to get up and let him come up with that lead. Even a small one would take forever to hand crank up. Yeah. So deep. Now if we're gonna hand crank like a breakaway lead and the lead comes off, it's a little bit easier. Because if you have to fight that lead off, that's gonna stop. Some of you know a lot of things come the way out. So. The lead and Dick's gonna unclip it and bring it right on in. Yeah, the fish came off, the fish came off, but that's about what it looks like. It's early yet. We're going to stay out here. We're sword fishing. All right, so the captain's come back up. He's inspected the bait. It looks just like it did when it went down. So what the captain uh, suspects is it was probably foul hooks, meaning hooked somewhere other than in the mouth. And that happens with these guys. Mike's got another one on the down rod. They're all down rods, but you know what I mean. There's the light. We'll talk about that later. It's dark down there, so we put a light on them. 
and um, we lost our fish. But we're not giving up that easy. Right, Andrea? Right. So we brought them up from 1,500 feet. The hooks were bare. We're gonna reset our drift. We're back out into 1,600 feet of water. We drifted about a mile and a half, so we're just back where they were. We've had some bites. We're gonna drop down again. So those are the little lights that are down at the bait end of the leader. Like I said, 1,600 feet, it is dark down there. There's no light. But everything down there seems to give off some kind of light from the phosphorus things. Big old eyes. So the light at the end of the bait does attract the swordfish. It brings them in. Mike's actually lacing up a fresh bait. Nice. They call me Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike it is. Is that actual dental floss? Oh, this is wax line. Wax line? Yes, sir. Which is like dental floss? Yep. Like that. Look at that. Plantation key sword bit. What a seamstress. Yeah. Got some old socks I'm gonna bring around. Have you darned the holes? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yes, sir. All right, looks like we've had some action on the buoy line. Yeah, oh yeah. Mike's sending that big launch electric. We're gaining on him. <laughs> Nick, your dart tip came okay. off. Mike, this is a dart. It's like a harpoon deal. And you need a little bit more than a gaff. We, he's going the wrong way. We gained on him and got it within 100 feet. And now this big boy's taking more line back out. Whenever they run, we don't want to put much on him. He's taking a run. We don't want to put much on him when that happens. He is taking it. He's taking it. We're on to one. This is a granddaddy. We've had this fish on for about 20 minutes. Nick's showing him on the bottom marker. So here's that 300 feet. You can see we're marking him. That's probably where that thermocline is, like Uncle Mike was saying. That's solid mark there. He's down there in his comfort zone. All right, we've been nursing this big guy in for the better part of an hour. We finally got back up to the lid. He could peel it all back out. Anything could go wrong. Here's a good place for it to happen. <laughs> Mike's past the braid. He's onto his 300 pound mono leader. Mike number mate, our mate Mike, has got his dart out. We're sword fishing. He flashed a little color. We can see just for a second. Oh, uh, now he's taking back line. All right, we're taking line back. He's, we're getting to the critical hour. We're in the red zone. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're on our fifth drift, but uh, Mike here is dredged up with some stuff that was floating around here. This is uh, the better part of a giant squid. All right, we're on our fifth drift, as I mentioned, and we've got a fish on. All right, we're up to the monofilament. Are we? Oh, we're throwing a little braid. Scratch that. All right, we've got the lead in sight. They're just gonna continue to finger this line onto the reel.
It's a big fish. We'll be back. We had him up. We saw the fish, about a good 100 pound fish, and uh, he wouldn't come up close enough to get the dart in it. He took a run. Now we haven't seen him anymore, so we're 0 for 4 on our fifth drift. We'll see what happens yet. Okay, it's almost 5 o'clock with five minutes to go. Mike gets hooked up. So this is going to be our last set. This is what it's all about. If we're going to get one on, we're going to get it today. We're going for redemption, not resurrection. You are dead. <laughs> well, the lead line is coming into sight. Mike's over here working that big pin there in the National Electric Reel. Got to give these guys some room. Captain just tagged that fish. We got one. Hey, and we got one. Come on in and look at your fish. Did you get a picture? We got him, Andrea. A lot of work. So we didn't give up, you guys. We got one. How about that? <laughs> Good stuff here. We're gonna measure them. Got to be 48 from the lower jaw to the 47. fork. 47. Well, I need the keeper, guys. He's gonna Let's make it, it back to the dock. Right. He's coming back. He's healthy, and we worked putting a long hard day for him. So we're gonna eat that one. He's chunky too. He's got a nice belly on him. You like that one, Captain? It ain't a monster, but it's a keeper. And uh, after that bad luck we had earlier, we're due for a break, and we got one for dinner. All right, that's gonna wrap up our offshore activities we got one it took all day but we got one with five minutes to go mike the mate pulled his magic and we got a legal swordfish in the boat let's get this guy back to the dock and have some fun with it We made it home. 48 knots on the way home. Uh, pretty close to an 11 hour trip. I want to tell these guys thank you. Well, okay. Closer to 12 hours. Big thank you to Mike the Mate for uh, all those intelligent qu answers to my stupid questions. Thank you, Nick, for getting me on the boat. And the big, the big thank you to our anglers, Mike and Andrea from Minnesota. You got me on the boat. You're making me look good in front of my boss. Thank you for letting me crash your selfish party. Swordfish party. Ah, oh, we doing good until that. Thank you for letting me come along on your swordfish trip. You did a good job. You're a good angler. Um, that's what we got at Bud Mary's. Nick, what if I want to fuck a trip with you? Uh, Captain Mike runs the boat most of the time, but call the marina office and don't always get a swordfish, but we saw we try hard and uh, had a little heartbreak earlier, but it was too getting away, but we got one at the end of the day. Made it worthwhile, so fuck with this fish and uh, come on down here to Island Products and check it out. Hopefully we'll see you guys down here on the boats. And that's another day of fishing out of Bud and Mary's Marina in Alamorada, the sword fishing capital of the world. Mm -hmm.